Hi, I'm Nick Raines from Leica Academy Australia. I'd never worry too much about noise in my pictures. I'd much rather have a sharp image using a high shutter speed and whatever ISO setting I need. That's changed. Not my opinion about using high ISO, but the ability of my cameras to go to even higher ISOs with less noise. And that's because of a new release in Lightroom Classic 12.3, which just came out the other day. That's the AID noise feature. And I've got to tell you, it's really good. When you're working with big telephoto lenses like this 100 to 400 from Leica on my Leica SL2, it's really important that your shutter speed is kept as high as possible. And in some circumstances, even in full daylight, you need to use a high ISO to get the 2000th or the 4000th of a second that you might need to capture things like birds in flight. So using high ISO is just you know, one of those techniques which you have to accept. My tolerance for noise is relatively high. I don't mind noise in my pictures. I know that it tends to disappear in the reproduction process, whether it's reduced for web viewing or going to an inkjet print or into a book. So it can be quite forgiving. Nevertheless, it's nice to have less noise, but still have a sharp picture. The new AID noise in Lightroom is nothing short of remarkable. Uh, it's much better than the previous iterations of the noise reduction, which wasn't bad anyway. But if you overdid it, it always tended to look a little bit plasticky. And if you wanted to go from a high ISO image to something that really, really did pull out the noise, you also ran the risk of pulling out all the detail at the same time. I mean, at the end of the day, detail is the variation between two close pixels, like an edge of something that's important, but it's also the variation between random uh, pixels of noise. So one pixel being slightly darker or lighter than another, that could be interpreted as noise or it could be detail. And if you remove too much noise, you remove the detail. Using an AI algorithm to, to actually reduce noise, from what I gather, tends to identify things in the image which you want to keep and separate out the noise. It's not just looking for differences, it's looking for context so this item here is a thing that we need to re re actually record accurately. This area, over, this area over here, like the sky, we can hammer in some denoise because it's supposed to be smooth. So the AI can distinguish between areas of fine detail and areas of not fine detail and apply the noise reduction differently. Now, I don't know exactly how it works, but that's the way it seems to work to me. Let's have a look at an image that I shot recently in the Kimberley um, using this exact rig here. And it came up pretty well. It shot at 800 ISO. Let me just switch over to my screen. And you'll see on the left hand side the enhanced version, and on the right hand side the original version. 800 ISO, f6.3. Uh, and it's pretty sharp, as you can see. But if you look at the left hand image here, you'll see that this sky is so noiseless that it could have been shot at 50 ISO. It's quite remarkable. And yet there is no sense of the image smearing or looking like it's shrink wrapped or having the details smudged out. And if I just scroll across to the wing, you'll see in that left hand shot, I'm hoping you can see it on the screen, that there's considerably more structure in the left hand side than there is in the right hand side. There's definite granularity in the underside of that wing. On the left hand side it looks beautiful. If I zoom in to 200% you can see quite clearly how noiseless the left hand image is and how granular that right hand image is. And that I would, would have reproduced beautifully that right hand image. It would not have been a concern at all surprisingly enough but I've now got an even better image based on this denoise technology. It's extremely effective. So let me just show you how we use it. I'm going to use this picture of Brisbane near where I live. Nothing special about the picture, but if I just find the original, which I think is this one, this is, and I've chosen this deliberately, it's an old picture. It was shot on the original Leica T, which was an 18 megapixel APS-C sensor, relatively old technology. This is going back about, oh crikey, it must be eight years or so. Uh, yeah, about eight years. Don't quote me on that, but it's quite an old camera. They don't make them anymore. It, the reason I picked it is because the lens was astonishingly sharp. So you got very, very sharp images, but at high ISO, it could get quite grainy. This image 
that we've got on the screen right now is 12,500. So it's not particularly bad. I was really quite surprised, but you can see very clearly in this shot just how much grain there is. If I were to go into the develop module, you'll see on the right hand side under detail where you'd apply sharpening and normally say the sharpening is on default, more or less, there is a new button here called noise, denoise. It says reduce noise with AI, the result will be saved as a new DNG file. So when you apply this, you get this dialog box. It generates a preview for you relatively quickly. That's with zero. So with when I click on it, you'll see the image with absolutely zero noise reduction applied. I just what I want to look at is this ferry here. And that's with no lumen noise reduction and no chroma noise reduction at all. So that's the, the right down deep in the file. It's as bad as it can possibly be. And you can see all that blotchy color information. As soon as I let my finger off the mouse, you'll see how it builds back the image and removes all that noise. It's really quite amazing. I think that's 200% view. Not exactly sure. But anyway, it gives you a pretty close view into the file. Now, when you do denoise, you can only do it on raw files, DNG files, original out of camera. You can also do it on TIFF files. So you can export a TIFF file and reapply some of these enhanced uh, settings in Lightroom. But you can't do denoise and super resolution at the same time. You also can't use this on a DNG file that was generated by Lightroom as part of a panorama or an HDR effect. You'd have to do the denoise first and then you could do the stitching or the HDR um, blending. So just there's a few little caveats like that. If I hit the enhance button, it will process the file and it's not particularly fast. Um, this is a 2018 MacBook Pro with six cores, so it's no slouch, but it takes a couple of minutes to do that. So I'm not going to actually click the button because I have prepared one earlier. And if I just select this image down the bottom and go to grid view and XY, you should be able to see, and I've chosen the wrong one, because the one on the left is the original. The one on the right is in fact the best I could do with Lightroom's existing noise reduction settings. That's as good as I could get. And if I just zoom in to one more stage, you'll, whoops, let me just do that again, there we go. You'll see how typical noise reduction, it's gone blotchy. Uh, it's not really pulled out any more detail. Arguably, it's a tiny bit sharper, let's say. This, but this is clearly grainier, definitely reduce the grain, but it's also at the expense of significant blotchiness in the wart around here. If I change this right hand image for the AI enhanced one, which just flipped, there we go. Ah, oh, they've swapped sides, my bad. There you go. But I think you can see now just how remarkable that transition is. And if I change this right hand one, to the best we could do with the noise reduction previously, there we go, you'll see how much of a big step forward it is. That water, and particularly these ripples, you see these ripples in the water from the wake of the boat? They're beautifully defined. They're only barely visible in the right-hand image. That's really clever. Also, the color in this little boat on the right here, the red color here, is so much better defined. So overall, it's completely superior. If I just go up to the top here and look at that area or that mast on the top, you'll see just how much better that left-hand image over the right-hand image is. And if I'll just look around a couple of other places. Yeah, this is a very good example here. You can see how these window frames are just beautifully defined. And on the right-hand side, they're kind of all smeary. So those edges, the, 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 the noise reduction hasn't known what to do with them. Is it, is it detail? Is it noise? Not sure what to do. So it's got that sort of shrink wrap blobby sort of look about it. Very, very, very good. So it's, it's one click. I use it on default, which is 50. I've experimented with higher and lower. 50 seems to work fine. Feel free to try it on different uh, subjects, uh, different settings. Uh, I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference, except that if you do it at the minimum amount, um, it doesn't work as well. So you know, what do you expect? But I also want to just point out one thing. People will bound to ask me what the difference is between something like this and one of the third party denoising applications out there. I don't have access to all of those apps, um, but I did download one. And if I just swap out the right hand image, let me get the right spot, there we go, 
I'll swap out the right hand image for the the right way around. No, I swapped them back again. <laughs> Lightroom's a little counterintuitive about which picture's on which side. The right hand side is now the enhanced version from Lightroom and the left hand side is now the best I could get from a third party application. I'm not going to say which one because I'm sure they all work relatively similarly and this is not intended to be any sort of definitive test of all the different noise reduction. It's just to give you an idea of just how good Lightroom is. Now, as you look now on the screen, the left hand one definitely looks sharper, but there's still this blotchiness in the water. Can you see how beautifully smooth that area is compared to this one? And if I move the view up to that building again, it's, it is quite hard to tell the difference. But clearly the right hand image has got much better definition in the structure of the building. The third party noise reduction software has also had trouble defining these window frames. Whereas on the right hand image, it looks pretty good. There's another spot which shows it up quite well. And if you look on the left hand side, can you see how blotchy these panels are in this building? And it's not blotchy here. It's maintained the distinction between the panels quite nicely. And if you look really closely, and this is at 200%, so we are seriously pixel peeping here. If I go even even if I go in even more, you'll see how there's a lot of artifacting around each of these blue panels, these blue window panels. Whereas here, it's not quite as grainless, but the definition of the detail is better. Now I could have cranked in more uh, noise reduction to remove any grain, but this is at 300%. So what you're seeing here is never ever going to reproduce in any sort of export from Lightroom. So it's beyond the threshold of perception at normal reproduction sizes. Um, it's only because I'm looking at it incredibly heavily magnified that I'm seeing these subtle differences. I want the fine structure. I don't care so much about the grain. The fine structure of this is a bit more diffused, therefore it will look slightly softer in the final result. So again, not trying to compare, do some sort of uh, which is the best test. The reason I'm not doing that is because, well, one, it's not fair and that's not my job, but I use Lightroom for as much as is possible because it's a workflow tool. I want to get things done and I don't want to be going in and out to third party apps. If that third party app gives me some significant benefits, then yes, I might use it, maybe for special cases. But if there's, if it's kind of mm, a little bit of a toss up, I mean, this is pretty close, then do I really want to go to that much trouble or do I just want to get the job done? The AID noise in Lightroom is so close, and I would argue possibly slightly superior to third-party apps, and I know people will disagree with me, but anyway, um, that I, it's not worth the trouble of going outside. I'm very, very happy with the results I get, and it will now allow me to shoot the sorts of pictures I take with my big telephoto lens uh, at higher and higher ISOs and still get really, really good results, not worrying about the noise in the final shot. So all in all, it's a big step forward for Lightroom. That's version 12.3, which was released quite recently. Anyway, my name is Nick Rains. I hope you found that useful. I'll talk to you again in a future video, no doubt.